Dashboards are an awesome component of Smartsheet. They help users represent data in ways that would be so difficult in other tools. They give the reins to users and managers to actually see what's going on in a quick high level view without having to drag all the people through all the data. But there are many ways users set up dashboards incorrectly and they can make it so a solution, even when it's really well built, can look like it's flawed or not even that useful. So today, we're gonna go over dashboards. We're gonna talk about what they do, how to set them up properly, and then how to frame them to other users to make sure that the other users understand the value each dashboard has. Let's get started. Dashboards are powerful assets within Sparsheet. They're able to represent data in graphs and reports to show what's going on within the solution and what the users are up to. They're a quick way for a manager to come in and see is my solution working? Are there any fires that I need to help put out? And is information flowing like I would expect it to? When we set up a dashboard, we really try to think about who is viewing it. We have specific dashboards we build for managers and then dashboards that we build for team members so that everybody has their own window into what's going on within a solution. When you have a large set of collaborators within Smartsheet, dashboards help each user understand their part of the puzzle and they allow the users to know when to start their work and when to end it and how much of their workload is left. Now you can maybe determine that by going into the sheets, but a dashboard is able to bring details together from many different places and maybe able to make it so the user doesn't have to navigate to all those places until they know they need to. So you can see this setup here on the dashboard. This is a roll up of a project and basically it brings together all the hours and shows how much is left, how much is um, used, and what's available. When you go through detail like this, you can see specific users and, and get into the specific usage on a person by person basis. But it's crucial to determine what actually matters for the users that are gonna view this. Sometimes users can feel like the Smartsheet dashboard isn't dynamic enough. But the job of the Smartsheet dashboard is not about being dynamic. It's about telling a story. The dynamic aspect is that you're looking at the workflows and you're looking at what's moving through the solution and you're bringing it together so that the dashboard represents that information. I think of it like a living PowerPoint presentation. When you set it up, you want it to be showing the most important data at the top and allowing that user to continually dig deeper into their detail. And then if they need to, make it easy for that user to navigate to the sub projects or any further detail to see exactly what's going on. It should be a roadmap to how everything's going. Let's talk about how dashboards work. So a dashboard is set up with widgets. If I click on this edit button, you can see that I'm able to move around the widgets as I see fit. I'm able to have metric widgets, you can have widgets that point to different locations, URLs outside of Smartsheet, or specific assets within Smartsheet. You're able to bring a logo in for your company, and you can adjust these widgets in a lot of ways. So if I were wanting to adjust my metrics, I have a lot of options for switching what type of chart it is. If the series shows the specific numbers, I'm able to do a lot of adjustments to make sure that my widgets show the right information. And sometimes we find that as data changes over time, we need to continually evolve these widgets to make sure that they work well with the data being presented. You can also make adjustments on the dashboard like removing specific criteria so that you can see specific details like if I only want to see hours remaining and I don't want to see hours used or available hours, I'm able to dice it down to that. This is the only dynamic aspect that is readily available within dashboards. There are some advanced ways that we show how to change dashboards on the fly, but that is for another video. So a dashboard is able to be duplicated with a solution. And what we typically do is we set up a dashboard within a project, and then we also set up dashboards to look at the entire portfolio. So there will be a high level dashboard for a manager to see everything going on with all projects. And then they're able to click down into further detail into smaller dashboards that are specifically for the project. We're able to build many types of dashboards and we find that having a collection of them for users to be able to first see the high level detail in any major aspect and then dig further in is the best way to architect your solution. 
because dashboards make it so that you can quickly see what's going wrong and right within a solution. When setting up your dashboard, it's crucial to make sure that you're using your real estate well. So if you can squeeze more detail into a small area without it feeling too noisy, it's best to do so. You want to strike the balance between a good amount of detail that helps the user not have to scroll very much and an aesthetically pleasing view that users are happy to look at and it doesn't feel too noisy, doesn't feel like weird colors or typos. I have found that even the smallest typo on a dashboard can stop an executive sometimes and they get hung up on why is that detail off and they forget to look at the bigger picture. So it's crucial to make sure that the dashboard is laid out well so that users can focus in on the business and the real problems at hand and not be concerned, not even really notice the dashboard as much as notice the details it's presenting. Another key building piece of a dashboard is making sure that you can click around. So links like this are really helpful, but it's also important to make sure that if there's a specific detail that you're seeing, that you can click into it and find out more. So a lot of times when we set up widgets, we try to make sure that there's a specific report that is showing this number and rep the representation that the number has. If there are maybe five or projects that it's representing, I want to be able to click on that and see those. We have that a little bit down here where we're seeing these totals, but a lot of times it's good to do the math for the user right on the dashboard so that they can put the two and two again. There's a lot to dig in on dashboards, but I hope this was a helpful high level view on some of the key aspects to understand with dashboards. If you're interested in learning more about dashboards and Swarmsheet, please smash that subscribe button and look forward to more videos.